All right, what's up, guys? I thought I'd make a quick video here. Um, this video is going to be about uh, ChatGPT and some of the things it can do. Just a quick video. I'm not going to make it very long because I want it to be something that you can take and just get what you need out of it and um, move on to the next thing. So let's go ahead and open up our browser. We've got ChatGPT right here. So one of the things it can do is it can act as a Linux terminal. Linux terminal, what is a terminal? Terminal is where you type commands in Linux. I'm going to ask it, can you emulate a Linux terminal? So if you're wanting to learn Linux, it is pretty awesome. So I can emulate. There are several ways to do this. One common way is to use a virtual machine or container or run a Linux operating system, which I'm running Cali Linux Purple. So um, basically, so it's got a, it's, it's pointing to a website, tutorialspoint.com. So, so, so this is an online bash uh, scripting tool that you can go and run Linux commands directly in the browser. But let's say I wanted to know what are some commands that I should learn first in Linux. And then we're going to go do them in the Linux terminal. So whatever ChatGPT says, that's what we're going to do. Okay. So that's a pretty good list right there, I think. List directory contents, change directory print working directory, uh, make directory, remove directory, touch. We may not do all these, but we'll do at least, you know, some of them. So we got remove, files, directories, cat, concatenate files, grep, um, chmod, changing file permissions, and then running a command with administrative permissions, man, which displays the manual pages, and then top, which is for displaying system resources. It's kind of like task manager for Linux. So, um, but which one should I do first? So if you're completely new, yeah. So ls change directory print working directory. So let's do that. Let's keep it short and simple. So we're going to go over into our Linux terminal, and we're going to say. So I've got line Linux terminal open. Um, this is called certcop. Um, I'm going to do the ls command. And what we can see, the ls command gives us various information that's in this directory. Pretty much anything that we've downloaded, um, any files. Notice that folders are in blue, files are in white. But there's more we can do with the ls command. Let's do ls-l. What that does is that shows us all the permissions in Linux. So if you want to see permissions, basically you can run the ls-l command and it will show you the directory's permissions, we got that right there. We've got the owner of the directory, the group of the directory, and then we got the size, timestamp, and then the name of it. So this is the AWS directory. I happen to have AWS command line installed. We might do that for another video later. Um, but let's go ahead and change into the documents directory. Let's use the CD command. So one of the things in Linux, it mentioned the man pages. If you don't know how to use a command, and you type the word man in front of um, CD, it will tell you if there is a man page. So CD is actually a shell built-in command, so there's no man page for it. Let's do man ls. So ls has a man page. So it says list directory contents. It gives you a synopsis, description, and then it gives you all the different, these are called switches, basically what you type in into the um, command line. So if you want to type ls tack something else, when I say tack, I just mean dash. So ls dash something. Um, so ls-a, ls-l, we could do um, ls-d uh, for just listing directories. So if we do ls dac let's do a. That lists everything kind of in a nice condensed format. ls-d. So we only have, um, so if we want to list a, let's say, what is it, AWS. So we can do ls tac d AWS, and it will list the directory. If we don't give it any parameters, it will just list um, that empty root by the dot. So that dot is the root um, for our particular, um, anything with a dot in front of it is pretty much like your, your local profile. Um, it's called a, we're in a, what's called a bash shell. So let's go ahead and do ls tac l and let's look at the permissions. All right. So permissions tell you if it's a D, it's a directory, and then you have read, write, and execute. So you have permissions for the owner, you have permissions for the group, and then everybody else. So 
you have something called the chmod command. If you want to change permissions on a file, this is actually called change mode. So it's change mode uh, file bits. So this command basically will change your permissions. Um, you can use it to um, modify read write. So if, some, if you don't want someone to mess with your file, so you might do something like this. I've got a uh, script here, script.sh. If I don't want it to be modifiable, right now it's read, write, and execute. So I could do chmod minus write script.sh. And because I own that file, I happen to be the owner, if I wasn't the owner, I would have had to do what's called a sudo. So now if I do the ls command again, notice that the write has been removed. That w is gone. So now you have the W is missing. So now it's just read and execute. It's still executable. I can still run it, but nobody's going to be able to write to it. So what is a read? Um, if I want to change the commands, uh, that's symbolic notation. If I want to do it, what's called octal notation, I can do numbers. So I could do chmod755 script.sh. And what does that mean? That's going to change it back to what it was. So why is it 755? Sorry about the copy and paste thing here. So 7 means that for the owner of the file, the owner has read, write, and execute. So a read is a 4, a write is a 2, execute is a 1. So basically if you add 4 plus 2 plus 1, that makes 7. So for the owner group, you do chmod 7, and then for the group permissions, it's a 5. So you add four plus one, that makes five. So you have five. So that means you have read and execute permissions for the group. And then everybody else also has read and execute permissions because it's a five. So it says read and execute, read and execute. So you can check it. Um, that's a very quick intro to chmod. There's a lot more I could talk about with chmod, but we got to get to the rest of these commands. What else did it say? It said uh, PWD. So we've got PWD, which is print, print working directory. Let's look at the man page. Print name of working directory. So PWD. So this is basically the current directory that, that I'm in. So if I say PWD, it will tell me I'm in the home slash circop directory. If I say uh, PWD-L, it will use what's called logical. So logical versus physical. You can think of logical like Basically, it's software. There's a thing in Linux called symlinks. So if I do a pwd-l, it will show me the logical directory. Now, I can do this pwd from anywhere. Let me change into just home. And I can do pwd from there. I can change into usr, share, and I can do pwd also from there. So whatever directory I'm in, it's going to show me that directory. So I'm going to change back into the search cop directory. And so we have... So we've touched on the PWD, the CD, the LS command, um, make directory. What if I want to make a directory? So I'm going to say, I'm going to change into the documents directory, and I'm going to make directory. Now, whatever I type here, um, I can type as many directories as I want. So let's say I want DIR1, DIR2, DIR3, DIR4, DIR5. So I want five directories. So it says cannot create directory because the file already exists. So if there's already a directory there, I will not be able to create it. So we've got nine directories. So let's change the name. Make directory, directory, um, let's call it directory, two, directory, three. And everything in Linux is case sensitive. So you have to make sure you type it. Whatever you type it is, that's going to be the name for it. So we got four directories, two, three, four, and five. Enter. So now, if I do ls command, now notice my new directories are created. And they're created with the same permissions as the other directories had. Why is that? Well, there's something called a mask, which we'll probably talk about in a later video. So this is, um, we got the make directory, the touch command. Let's do the touch command real quick. The touch command is basically designed to do, um, it can update timestamps on files. So let me back out of here. I've got this script.sh. If I type in touch, notice the time right now is 1319 from May 12th. If I do touch script.sh, it's going to change that timestamp to today. 
So basically the touch command, I can also create empty files. Let's say I want to create a file called file.txt with the touch command. I can do that. So now I've got a file.txt. So, so I've got a lot of different things I can do. Um, the touch command, we went over the man page. So if I look at the man page for touch, update the access and modification times of each file to the current time. So, cool, great. So you can also say, I don't want you to change the time. You could say change only the access time. So, so that was about 10 minute video. We got uh, the man command, we got the touch command, we got LS, we got the change directory, we got make directory. So we're gonna do more videos like this. We'll keep them short and sweet. We're gonna ask ChatGPT what we should do in the next video. So let me know what you, in the comments what you think we should do for the next video. And I'll see you guys next time.